Welcome to the Making Real Estate Fun podcast. We're here at Emmett's in downtown Downers Grove. We're having some beers and uh, talking about insurance today with Jonathan Twitty from State Farm Insurance. He's a friend of ours. Uh, I'm joined by my co-host, uh, Keith Hoffman from Draper and Kramer Mortgage, Mortgage Corp. Did I get that right? You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, excuse me if I stutter. Uh, Taji Clark from Coldwell Banker. He's a realtor. And I'm Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. And like I said, we're going to talk about uh, the pitfalls of homeowners insurance. And, and Jonathan's going to educate us. And we'll tell you a little bit about the uh, beers we're drinking here at Emmett's Brewery and how we like them. So, Jonathan, thanks for being here. Kevin, thank you very much. I appreciate um, the invite. Um, thanks to you too, Keith and Taji. So, really appreciate the opportunity to come out here and you know talk a little about um, real estate and insurance and how um, it's important to everyone involved in the process. So, tell us, a home buyer or a home seller, what do they need to know? What are the fundamental skeletal topics that they need to even think about when it comes to insurance? So, I guess when, it, when we're talking about you know homeowners insurance 101, um, for the first time home buyer, usually they, they're unaware of what's being covered, and there's really there's there's two different types of policies mainly here in in the home insurance realm. You have homeowners insurance policies, which is covering the dwelling itself, so that's actually the, the structure of the house. And then you're also looking at all your personal property. So everything inside. So I always like to break it out. You have the structure, you turn your house upside down, everything that falls out, that's your personal property. So those are the two main things that we're covering. And then you get into townhome and condo policies. So those typical policies are covering from the walls in. So usually your association is covering um, the outside um, of the structure. So those are the two main policies that we're typically dealing with here in the state of Illinois. How do people prove personal property loss? Do they need receipts for everything they bought? Or? You know, it's, it's not a requirement. I mean, it, it, it makes the, the claims process a lot easier if you do have receipts for some of the bigger ticket items. Um, if, you know, if you're doing with a two bedroom condo and there's a claim and someone says they have four 55 inch flat screen TVs, that's gonna raise some <laughs> eyebrows. Um, and you might have a special investigation unit come into um, play there with that claim. Okay. So, but people are, are often very concerned, like, oh my gosh, do I need to keep every receipt? They don't have to. It's something that really, if you have, it's good to keep some type of list. So with all my clients, I tell them, create some type of log. If it's pictures, if it's video, if you go through, create like a Word document or an Excel document of some of your items. If you have six men's suits, great. If, you know, if the female in the house has 50 pairs of shoes, valued at, I don't know, 10 grand, because I've seen that before. You know, write that down, because if there ever is a claim, it's an emotional process. It's going to make the whole process a lot easier for, you know, the insured and for the claim adjuster who's dealing with it. So, If you need someone to help you do a video log, Tom Weiler, Weiler Studios, doing our videography. Thank you for that, Tom. <laughs> yeah. <It's> a, <laughs> things like uh, engagement rings or expensive jewelries or heirlooms, is that something that you... That, I'm sure that's something you would get a special writer for. I yeah, think. you do. So we, um, at State Farm, and we do something we call a personal article policy. So we separate um, those high-ticket items and insure them, um, usually with a zero-dollar deductible. So if all of a sudden, if a stone does fall out, if you lose your ring, you're not going to pay anything type of deductible. It's going to be replaced. So very important. Um, I've run across a couple claims where people didn't want to insure those, and it's fairly cheap for... Um, the coverage you're getting, and they're always pretty disappointed. And we come back and tell them, well, we're only going to pay up to say fifteen hundred dollars for a jewelry item that was maybe worth eight grand. So, sure. yeah, so it's very important to, and, and we do a very good job, my staff and I, of talking with asking, like, hey, do you have any jewelry that's worth over three thousand um, dollars? Trying to figure out what's important to them and what we need to make sure. Um, should be covered. It's never our choice what we're going to cover. So we're always asking the homeowner, um, hey, if you have these items, here's what we recommend. Um, and it's up to them whether they want to go through with it or not. You know, the, one of the things that as a mortgage lender, we always are concerned with the deductibles. Yes. So I know that there's a minimum amount, larger amount. Can you give us a little idea, you know, of what's the best thing and, and where they range? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wide range. Things have changed, uh, are changing a lot in the homeowner's industry right now. I kind of compare it to the health insurance industry, which people are very familiar with. We're seeing raising deductibles, and that's what's happening um, in our realm at the same time. So, you know, kind of, you know, 
the five hundred dollar homeowners deductible. It's kind of rare. There's a couple companies that still have that out there. Mm -hmm. You know, our um, we do percentage deductibles, which are all based upon your dwelling. So um, the lowest you can get is a half percent. So if you have you know a two thousand dollar dwelling um, coverage, you can the lowest you can get is a thousand dollar homeowners deductible. So and really, you know, the higher deductible you go. Um, the bigger discount you're gonna have on your premium, which is good. So it's really, it's talking to people about what their kind of pain point is when it comes to, yeah. you know, looking at these deductibles. And it's really, it's educating people on, you know, when to file a claim. Um, we can never be the person to say, file a claim or don't file a claim. It's yeah. trying to get as educated as possible and making sure that they're aware of, okay, hey, your rates could go up if you file this claim, depending right. on what caused it. Yeah. Um, but it's important, yeah, I mean, it, the more, obviously the lender, you guys are concerned. Um, sure. You don't want someone to have too high of a deductible if they're not going to, if they don't have that money to back it up at the same right. time. So right. we're looking at all those financials. What are some things that people can do in order to lower or, you know, lower their premiums or lower the amount that they're going to shell out for? Okay. So, um, and we're always concerned, I mean, everyone, we want to make sure you have deadbolt locks, um, fire extinguisher, smoke detectors. But if you do have a smoke detector that actually, if it goes off, it's going to alert the local fire department. That gives you a discount. If you have an alarm system that um, is covering doors and windows and reports to a central monitoring station, that's going to give you a bigger discount just if, unless you have just, you know, that basic, um, we call it a local alarm where it's, okay, you have the ADT system, but it's not being monitored, so it's just going to make a loud sound if someone comes in. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah, there's very levels of discounts on there. If you're claim free, that helps out. Um, what people don't realize is if you call up your insurance carrier and file a claim, even if it doesn't pay out anything, that still is on your record as a claim. And right. if you go to switch insurance, mm -hmm. you're not going to have as, you know, as low of a rate as you would if you didn't have that claim on you. So it's very important, I think, to no matter who you're with, you want to discuss with your agent um, and get educated before going and filing the claim. Unless you have a hole in your roof and you have water pouring in, yeah, you want to get that yeah, claim filed right, right away. <laughs> Is there a rule of thumb, like a dollar amount rule of thumb? Like when I, when I do a bankruptcy for a client, I'll say, you know, it, it varies for everybody, but really if it's less than $15,000, you really don't want to do a bankruptcy. Is yeah. there a rule of thumb where it's like if it's less than $10,000, you know, the, probably not going to be? You know, that's a great question, Kevin. There's not. It's, it's pretty funny. It's like I've had people who have had a $1,000 deductible, and they had $1,200 worth of damage. And I asked them, like, well, can you afford the $200 um, and not file a claim? And they said, well, why would I do that? I, this is why I pay my homeowner's insurance. Sure. Well, that's why, we, that's why we see homeowner's rates you know, continue to go up. But we'll always see them go up in the state because of all the crazy storms that keep coming through here. People think that the hurricanes down in Florida impact us here in Hawaii. It's not. It's the tornadoes. It's the hail. It's all the wind. So that's what impacts us here in the state of Illinois. But, you know, I try to have that discussion with all my clients when they're thinking about it. I try to get, you know, some reputable contractors to look um, at a potential claim to see if, you know, what the dollar amount's going to be. So, so if they're working with you, they'll call you up and say, here's the damage I had. Here's how much we think it's going to cost for repair. And you can give them an assessment of how much you think their, their rates will go up. All I can months. never see how much the rate's going to go up. I can look at, you know, if it's, if it's not um, weather related, I can look and say, guy, this claim's probably going to fall, this claim free discount's going to fall off. So you can see your rate go up this much. Um, but really, I, I, we want to get educated. Um, I'll have the contractors look at it for free, sit down. You know, if they have a you know a thousand dollar deductible and you know there's ten thousand dollars worth of damage, yeah, I mean, by myself, I'm going to file the claim. So I'm not, I'm I, not going to fork out you know, ten grand to have that you know repaired. You know, I, so, I, I was going to say I had a, a claim, um, a water problem at my house, and State Farm is my preferred insurance company. <laughs> um, and what I found out is uh, I had about eighty thousand dollars in damage in between the two months that they put me up in a hotel yep. and the damage repair in my home. So I was really concerned when I got ready for my renewal how that is going to affect it. How much will that affect somebody in a huge loss like that? Well, it's never going to be whether it's, you know, if it's 10 grand or if it's 100 grand. Um, a lot of times, I mean, you could have a surcharge on there. That's something that, you know, those come from underwriting. Me, the agent, I'd, I have no control over that. Um, 
I'll call up and I'll you know talk about a scenario and find out if this happens, how right. much could it go up? Right. You know, so we can try to estimate everything. I think it's important to have all those those figures out there. When you're doing eight thousand dollars, I mean that's a you know, eighty thousand dollars is a, a big, lot of money. That's a pretty good size right. claim. Chump right. change, chump change. <laughs> and kind of how you mentioned, I mean, another important factor um, aspect of the homeowner insurance policy is, you know, we're going to put you up somewhere else for up to two years. You know, this is State Farm. You know, right. so we're going to put you up for up to two years. You know, pay for any additional expenses. So if you're spending, say, two hundred dollars on food a month, um, you know, and now you have to spend four hundred bucks, we'll pick up the extra two hundred dollars. So. There's a lot of there's a lot of different coverages in like you know state farm homeowners policies that's right. very important that people often have no idea is there until I sit down with them and educate them. All right, lightning round, basement flooding, go. All right, um, yeah, yeah, water back in the sewer. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yep. so, okay, most people think that um, oh they get their homeowners policy if water comes in their basement, typically through a sump pump fails, it's going to be covered. It's not unless you have a back of a sewer and drain. Um, so you need back of the sewer and drain coverage. The only time it will be covered underneath your homeowner's policy is if you actually have a clog on your property, so in your house. So your kid decides to, you know, flush a whole roll of toilet paper um, down the toilet. Yeah. It overflows, goes down the basement, causes 80 grand worth of damage. All right, it's your homeowner's policy. But if your sump pump fails, <laughs> You don't have back of the sewer and drain. You have three feet of water in your basement. You have no coverage. Roofing. Get the fishing pole roofing. out. Roofing. Give me roofing. Roofing. Okay. <laughs> another um. That's a, another fun one that we're dealing with right now. So we find that a lot of people use that homeowners homeowners policy or try to use it as a maintenance policy. So they have the roof. It's 20 years old. Oh, I'm not going to repair it. I'm just going to wait for a storm to come through. Well, here's what's happening now, is the adjusters are going to come out. They're going to look at it and they're going to say, Hey, you know, there's most of your roof is normal wear and tear so you might get paid out a little but most likely you're not going to get your entire roof replaced um, unless it's newer i mean that's the thing if hail come through wind i mean those are most of our roofing da roofing claims but we don't um you know we don't depreciate the roof at all um there's some companies out there that do so you know if you have a roof that's 15 years old guess what it's going to de be depreciated 15 years and last and lightning round question umbrella yeah. policies Umbrella policy is very important. You're a lawyer, um, Kevin, so you're familiar with this. So an umbrella policy is giving you additional liability coverage to extend over your, your home, um, your cars, boat if you have that. And these follow you around the world. So I've seen some crazy things where, you know, I had a client riding his bike um, down in the city, hit, um, hit someone that was running and got sued. Oh. And that's a liability policy comes in, pays out for it. So, right. um, but yeah, umbrella is very important. I think everyone should have one. It's there to protect your assets, um, everything that we all work very hard for. So, you don't want to leave um, anything exposed. Good. Yeah, you did well in the lightning round. You're not going to have to reimburse us for the beer. You won. Hey, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you drinking, and how do you like it? So I'm drinking the World's End. It's their IPA. Um, it's great, you know, a little hoppy, um, not too hoppy though. So if you're an IPA fan, I think it's a great choice. Um, very smooth. I'll definitely be drinking it again. I'm doing the cow tipping milk stout, and it is very creamy and delicious. I'm a stout guy, and it's uh, it's doing the trick. How about you guys? What do you guys got? Um, I've got the Peacekeeper, which is a wheat beer, and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's keeping, <laughs> <laughs> keeping the peace right now. <laughs> That's good. Well, I'm drinking the same as Jonathan, and uh, it's a really great beer. And I have to tell you, if you are anywhere in the Downers Grove area, you really need to come down to Emmett's Ale House. This is a fantastic place. It used to be a, another microbrewery. It was taken over, redone, and uh, the Burns family is the... Uh, owners, uh, the majority owners, I should say, uh, managing ownership, and uh, it's a great place, so, you know, come on down. Yeah, great place in downtown, Downers Grove on Main Street. Uh, it's kind of a Downers staple, I guess, at this point. So, it definitely yeah. is. They're also sponsors of Rotary Grove Fest, and uh, they participate in the craft beer event, so I know they'll be here in the summertime when we're here drinking some cold beers out there. <laughs> 
So right, and, they, and they have great weekly specials too. So I think on Thursdays they're half off pitchers. If that's like I think half off pitchers. Yeah. And I know they change, but great two food, dollar I mean. two dollar tacos on Tuesdays. Two tacos, two, you know, like you can get. They're not paying any. If we had to buy the beers. They're not paying anything <laughs> for this. But commercial. no, thank you, Joe, for letting us come in here and enjoy this. You know. But it is. It's a great place. So Jonathan, how can people reach you if they uh, need some insurance for the home? Or well, I'm not. I'm in Donner's Grove at the corner of 75th and Fairview. Um, phone number is. 630-964-0646. Um, my website is insurewithtwitty.com. So you can find me on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, a um, little bit of everywhere. So right. yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or need help with anything. Yeah, and Jonathan's a good friend of all of ours, and we all highly recommend him. Keith, how Absolutely. can people reach you? They can uh, pick up the phone and call 630-306-LOAN, 630-306-5626, and that's the easiest way to get me. All right, tells you. Best way to get in touch with me is through my website, just tajiclark.com. Um, all of my social media accounts are there, phone numbers, email address, everything. That's the easiest way to get me. Uh, and if you need help with any sort of legal issue, real estate related or not, you can call O'Flaherty Law at 630-324-6666. Uh, check out our website, makingrealestatefun.com, for a lot more content, blog articles, podcasts, video blogs. I also do two other podcasts, learn-about-law.com, which is about law, all areas of law, and seizeyourbusiness.com, where we interview business owners. So check those out, too. Thanks so much. Oh, uh, before I forget, Tom Weiler, Weiler Studios, doing the video. Uh, we really appreciate it. So if you need a video for your, your home that you're trying to sell or for your business, uh, he'll help you out, and he's doing a great job. Thanks for listening. All right.